Okay, got a lesson on uh, 2.1.1 transformations with functions, and we're gonna try to get you get you going here with some vocabulary. Now, this activity over the next three lessons is a little bit of a self-guided discovery activity. So, I want to try to give you some bare minimum to help you to get you going, but you need to kind of work yourself through this activity. We'll have solutions posted on our on our website so you can check your work but there is a decent amount that you are going to need to read through and try on your own. Uh, a couple of definitions that I do want to contribute here in this activity to ask you to explain what a function is in your own words. And I've got a formal definition for you right here. And I've even got some definitions for domain and range a little bit later. So if you want to pause your screen and write down the definition, that would be good. But I've got the definition for a function, a rule that assigns one x value to exactly one y value. Um, another way of thinking about x values and y values are inputs and outputs. So one value that I can put into a function gets exactly one value back out. Um, it asks a little bit about this graph here, f of x. Um, it asks, uh, how do you know it's a function? Uh, and I just put a couple of comments there. It passes the vertical line test, so I can draw a vertical line and never hit the graph more than one place. Uh, another way of saying that would be no x value is assigned to multiple y values. Um, I'm going to move it up to where you can see the definition for domain and range. If you want to pause again and get those written down, that's fine. Uh, but domain is the set of all values that are able to be used in the function. So that would be the input values. And the range would be the set of all values that are the result of the function or your output values. Okay, then we start talking about this thing called key points. So I said right here that the key points are where the graph changes. So I'm going to go back up to where this graph is, get rid of my vertical line test, and circle what I mean when I say where the graph changes. So those four points are where the graph changes. Now at the ends, that's where it starts and stops, these points here. And you can see that the graph is decreasing until the second key point, and then it starts to just become a horizontal line and seem to stay at the same y value for a bit. Then it begins to decrease again until it ends. So where the graph changes, we call those characteristic points and you could just use your coordinates to name these so we'll have uh, a point at negative 1 1 we'll have a point at positive 1 negative 1 we have a point at positive 2 negative 1 and we have a point here at positive 4 negative 2 so those are the four places where this graph changes. So when we talk about key points or characteristic points, that's what we're talking about, where the graph changes. Okay, they ask us, can we evaluate? So this literally, these f of 1, f of negative 1, they're asking you to evaluate the function when the x value or the input value is that. So what you're doing is you're looking at the graph and you're saying, okay, when I move over right 1 to the x value of 1, where is the graph at? So you look at your graph, I move to the right 1 unit, and I have to go down, and the graph is at negative 1. The y value is at negative 1. So the output or the y value would have been negative 1 when the x value was positive 1. All right, if the x value is negative 1, we would go left 1, and that would make us go up to try to find where the graph is, and it's right here at positive 1. So the y value or the output when our input is negative 1 will be positive 1. Now I'm asking you to do it in the reverse way. I've said, okay, go find where the function's at negative 2. Find out what its x value is. Okay, so... When I'm going up or down, those are where my y values are. So negative 2 would be right here in this line. So where's my graph at? And this is where the graph touches a y value of negative 2. So the x value would have been 1, 2, 3, 4 units. 
So my x value was 4 when the y value is negative 2. And then it asks, okay, what about when the x value is 5? So I need to go over to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm looking and I don't see anywhere on this vertical line where the graph is. Because the graph stops when the x value is 4 and stops when the x value is negative 1. So if the function is not where my x value is, then we say that the function is undefined there. So we would put undefined, which is also you could use this empty set, which means no values are at that place. The function does not go over there. Okay, next we're going to ask you to fill out this table. Um, when we give you the x values, what are the y values that correspond? And negative 1 is to the left, so that's this point right here. That will be positive 1. All right, positive 1. That will be this point right here, so that will be negative 1. And positive 2 right here, that would be also negative 1. And positive 4, that's right here, and that would be negative 2. Those would be the y values. So we fill out our table, and it just so happens that they asked us for the y coordinates of those characteristic points. And we can start trying to figure out how we can use the table to identify what's going on with the function.